fiercely pursuing accountability on policy and implementation. It's time for another DJ Elf 7 candidate interview. Hey folks, how's it going? Check it out. It's your boy DJ Elf 7. We're back again for another episode. As you know, I'm, you know, interviewing candidates from all across the nation. Got a candidate with us today. Uh, excited to check him out. He's our first Republican. Very cool. Why don't you introduce yourself? Go ahead. Hey, my name is George Shepard from Lake Wales, Florida. I live out in Polk County on a cattle ranch, and I'm running for United States House of Representatives. We don't actually know what the districts are going to be, but um, we're waiting on the state of Florida, and as soon as they, they do, we're going to start running. Cool. Uh, can you tell me, like, why are you running this? Do it. What really sparked this run? Um, the person that was our current representative didn't represent the values of Polk County and our surrounding communities. So that's what encouraged me to run. And now, we're, like I said, we're just waiting on the state to finalize what the district's going to look like so we can move forward. Sure. What is your relevant experience as in terms of, you know, um, this job? As far as running for, con for Congress? Yeah, like what? Like maybe you had a government or have management or anything else. <laughs> Okay. No, I'm, I'm a logistics manager. Um, I, I, I've been in trucking for about two decades. I actually owned a trucking company at one time. Um, I ran all kinds of different kinds of businesses. I've had lawn services when I was a kid. I've had, you know, different, different things that I've done. So my, my experience is real world corporate problem solving, which is something that we need in Washington, DC. That's real solid. You know, you're going to, you're going to know people who like how the process of setting up business, things like that, right? The issues that they face. So maybe aware of some things in your industry right so okay that sounds fair um and uh so within uh all the things that you've done right a lot of people say oh i'm for this position for that position you know that that's fine whatever but what about your ability to you know transform right those ideas into actually passing right so what what relevant right uh skill or what what other, what accomplishment are you most proud of achieving some people say my kids and stuff like that. I'm not really looking for that answer, right? Maybe something you achieved in business, right? Uh, what, what have you accomplished, right, that you're most proud of that's relevant to this job? Well, I have a really great core group of guys that I've been working with for a long time. And I've gone through and, and changed things up. And, and I've changed a lot of different things at companies that I've worked with. I'm, all we do is, is uh, food. So if you go to the grocery store you've eaten stuff that we've delivered especially from where you are in new york city there we, we deliver up there all the time it's amazing logistics is amazing how things move around the country and i've also been been very fortunate to be a proud a part of it so that that would be walking into a grocery store and picking up something and you know that you had that that's something you delivered you yeah. you were a part of it so that's successful that's execution, one of the most rewarding things. right? Successful execution of your main goal for your business, right? So that, that's a that's a good answer. So I have a bunch of political organizations that I work with, and I'm going to ask. Uh, I'm going to put them first and ask about some of their positions, right? I, I share a lot of these positions as well. First of all, okay. uh, have you ever heard of Julian Assange? Julian Assange from WikiLeaks. Yeah, you got it. Would you support the freedom of Julian Assange? Yes, I would. I don't think that Julian, Julian, Julian didn't really do anything except release information that he was given. Um, I don't really believe he should be in jail. I don't think we should be persecuted for that. I mean, it's, it, it's, we're, we're right now, the U.S. military is, and, and, and our current administration is broadcasting what we're doing over in Eastern Europe. They're telling them uh, the, all the American people in the whole world were sending B-52 bombers over over to Eastern Europe. Why do we need to know that? Why can't why can't we keep that? I mean, it's almost as if they're starting to start trying to start World War III. I don't understand why all this stuff is out. Um, so Julian Assange, what he did, is it a crime? Maybe, but I mean, it was it was information that was leaked to him. It came from somewhere. Yeah, Chelsea <laughs> so Manning, right? Chelsea Manning. He got the right. information. Yeah. Right. Right. Correct. Yeah, he just published it, right? So, no, I don't think he should. I don't I, believe he should. I deeply be jailed, appreciate but, uh, that. Thank you so he's much. Yeah. But he's in jail. Yeah. So he's this, in jail. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is. So, the second question I remember is, seeing him get, get ripped out of the embassy, so, yep. 
Yeah, I would like to see him out there too. Yeah, appreciate it. The second question is uh, universal basic income. Would you support U UBI? That's a tough one. Okay. Um, I would have to know more about it. Okay. I've I've read a little bit about it where where it, where AI is going to take over and people won't be able to get a job because their jobs are all gone because they uh, they don't have they won't have the ability to to make a living. That's something that I would have to read more about and know more about to give you a, a good answer other than what I already know, which is, I think it was uh, Andrew Yang that was running for president in the 2020 correct. cycle that was talking about it. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, yeah. I could just provide a little bit of my, my input on that, right? The thing is that there's a lot of government programs that are say they're going to do something but end up actually having horrible results, right? That are completely have nothing to do with what they were originally designed for. So the thing is that, right, um, supporting or not supporting, right, the implementation, it could be a lot of different things. So uh, people that just blindly support it, right, without really knowing what they're supporting, that, that's a little bit, uh, I like your answer to tell you the truth, right? I think that's appropriate, right? A lot of things get this label, and all of a sudden people think that they understand what that means. Not really, right? That, that, that term could mean really anything. So appreciate that, yeah? Okay. Like Medicare for all, actually, okay. I'm actually have uh, deep reservations about that nowadays, right? The celebrities who are in charge of that particular process don't listen to the people who are the, the people that they're supposed to, uh, they're claimed to represent the actual poor. Uh, if you go to watch the Medicare for all march, which I was involved in, no poor people got to speak. It was only celebrities. It's ridiculous. I'm sorry. So uh, the third one is going to be okay. P uh, another group that work with people with disabilities, right? Now, the thing is that people, if we look at minimum wage, it's kind of like, you know, a subsistence wage. People barely, barely get by. Um, so, but people with disabilities are allowed to be paid sub-minimum wage. And if, they're, if they can't be productive, I get nobody wants to pay that, but maybe federal subsidies could make that up. Um, would you support minimum wage, at least, for people with disabilities? People with disabilities, as, as far as getting government assistance? Uh, well, the thing is that, right, minimum wage, um, right? If they're working a job, right, yeah? People with disabilities are allowed to be paid sub minimum wage. Um, you know, they're, that's kind of. Uh, I, th I would like to see them paid at least minimum wage. People with disabilities. Gotcha. Would you support uh, minimum wage for what, people with disabilities? What type of, what, what type of per people are you referring? Uh, what disabilities are you referring to? Okay, most of the disabilities people end up working in food service. That's a very common place where they end up factories stuff like that and the factories are actually allowed to pay them less money for their time there's a variety of things they do actually there's a lady with autism who actually designs slaughterhouses she's one of the top people in the country right so i know a lot of people with autistic children that you know I, it's very heartbreaking it's a very tough experience i tell them look you know there's an example of i, I do yeah so that, that's an amazing story but you know uh, a lot of them struggle you know in the, in the job market and they end up making sub minimum wage doing maybe food service something like that and uh, I think it's pretty tragic you know I'd like to see uh, at least you know they have more challenges I'd like to see them at least get minimum wage if you can you can't but well, that, that makes it, yeah. sense if you're working you should get paid what the minimum wage is I mean if, yeah. if you're gonna hire an employee you have to provide health insurance. You have, I mean, if you have over three employees, you have yeah. to provide health insurance, workman's comp. I mean, we we deal with this every day. So, yeah, they, they should absolutely get minimum wage. Yeah, appreciate that, right? Um, so the okay. So now I'm gonna move to like uh, the trans community. Okay. Now the thing is that people who are trans, right, they mm -hmm. get discriminated against in their jobs, and I get it, right? They have a different lifestyle. I'm not saying I approve or disapprove, right? Yeah, but you know they face discrimination. So they end up, let's say, the public housing system, right? They're trying to get into the public housing because they can't get a job. Now, let's say, let's say for instance, that 10% of the people applying, right? I'm just making this up, right? 10% of the people applying for public housing are trans, right? But we see that only 2% of the people self-identifying as trans are in the system. So we can see there's some kind of discrepancy, right? There's no law saying that you can discriminate against trans people. But how can we assure that these, this group, right, whatever they believe, right, that they get equal access to public resources. How can, right, there's no law saying you can discriminate them, but if we see some kind of discrepancy, how can you help solve that situation? That's another thing that I would have to do a lot more research on. I wouldn't want to say something and it not be correct, or I wouldn't want to say something and not absolutely know what I'm talking about. Sure. 
So that was something that I'll have to, I'll have to take some notes on and, and go back. And if you'd like to interview me another, another, at another time, sure, I'll okay. definitely have some answers. I'll you. provide a little bit of just a little color on the particular question itself. So the thing, remember I talked about the 10% versus the 2%. So there's an idea of quotas there, right? Do you believe that quotas are actually a way to like l understand the system? Another thing is, if you take, some people have said, right, if the trans people are facing discrimination, like getting beat up or whatever, right, yeah, then let's put them in their own building, but that could also be considered ghettoization, right? Can you imagine we took all the black people in a community and just said, we're gonna put you into one building? <laughs> right, like that could be very controversial, right? So there's actually a variety of issues that are, it's hard to police people because they're gonna do what they're gonna do anyways. So this is a very complex problem, but I just throw it at Kansas just to see how they will react, right? Because it's um, it's a, you're gonna get tough questions like this as a as a leader. You get what I mean? Of course. Yeah. Okay. So, sure. all right. Let's move on to the. Uh, have you ever heard of something called right to repair? I have not. Okay. So the thing is that you know, like um, your cell phone, right? What they'll do is they'll actually make what what iPhones do now is that let's suppose you crack your screen, right? So before you could take to like, like uh, when you take it to the Mac store, they'll say, you know what, we can't replace your screen, or they'll say the cost of replacing your screen is basically equal to the phone, so you just end up buying a new phone. It creates a lot of waste, and uh, now they're even locking down further. Actually, Biden made a executive order because the military, right, yeah, the, the, um, the exclusive contracts for fixing the, like the, the vehicles and stuff were actually causing all kinds of problems, and he said they had to stop. The farmers in a... Uh, with their tractors and stuff, they can't fix their tractors anymore because they have to get it fixed at the dealership, at the John Deere dealership. So we, uh, there's a lot of... Uh, most, farmers, yeah. most farmers that I know repair, repair stuff themselves. They're, they're yeah. very handy they and very genius at yeah. You're absolutely making, right. At, That's their business. Me, I, I know plenty. Yeah, but the tractors, mm -hmm. you can absolutely. ask them out there, right? They the all, tractors? All yeah. But the tractors, what John Deere do, now is doing is, right, because they're very computerized now, they are forcing the farmers, right, to do the service through them because they're using computerized parts in the, in the, in the machine that really resist them being able to repair the machine. Like, they'll lock the whole machine. Well, that's all. That's, yeah. that's, all, forms, that's all forms of, of vehicles. I mean, I have a John Deere tractor, a 4052 John Deere tractor right out back, and it... It is computerized. Yeah. I mean, I, could I work on it myself? I mean, hydraulics and things of that nature on the bucket and, and on the bush hog, and sure. But when it comes to actually repairing the computer, I would probably need to get a, a programmer so I could read the code to figure out what's what's wrong with it. My car, same thing right behind me. I have a programmer for it. I plug it in. It tells me what's wrong with it. I change that part. Mm -hmm. It fixes the problem. Luckily, knock on wood, I haven't had any problems. But that's that's everything these days. You yeah, practically yeah, yeah. have to have a pilot's license to fly. So, yeah, absolutely. Some of that is by design, right? Sometimes it's not really like necessary, but they design it in there to lock it down, and it becomes a new form of uh, of uh, subjugation, right? Where we are, they get to still own the product in a way, right? So either way, but uh, can, so right well, to repair something that you would wait on, or could you support right to repair? Oh, absolutely. Waste not, want not. If you if you are wasting things, I mean, it, the world is is got way too much garbage. I mean, here's the thing. So, battery electric cars. Electric cars, I think they're great. So you 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 buy an electric car, you drive it for five years, you take it, you say, oh, I want a new one. You take it to the dealership, you trade it in. They take that car, clean it up, put it on their lot. Here comes a guy working for a living says, well, honey, it's time to buy a new car. Let's go. Do they have this electric car down it? I'm not going to say a manufacturer. At so-and-so's dealership, the guy walks in and buys the car. Two years later, the battery dies. Now he's looking at a sixteen dollars to $20,000 charge for a new battery. They yeah. take that battery out of the car. They take it and put it in expensive warehouses. It's, there is no great solution, but you have to do the best you can, just like with everything. You find you have a problem. You look at your problem. You identify, okay, this is this is how I can fix it, or this is the best solution, and you go and you do that. And I'm I'm a little torn on electric cars. I know that we can make the uh, big gasoline cars a lot more efficient temporarily until we can actually figure out how to be 
carbon neutral, which is what I think is wonderful. I mean, I'm glad that, that they're moving in that direction, but there's also all the waste that comes with all these batteries. And the other thing you have to ask yourself is, where are they getting all the lithium to put these lithium ion batteries? They're strip mining for it. So there's a whole nother dilemma that you have. Now you're strip mining to get lithium and guess where, the, where, where they have a massive amount of lithium? Afghanistan. So we had, we had Afghanistan, we controlled it. Now, now the Taliban controls it and they have massive amounts of lithium. So China will go to the Taliban and they'll import lithium from, from Afghanistan. So then the, now the Taliban's got money. They'll, they'll, they'll bring the lithium to China. They'll make it into batteries and they'll sell them back to us. Cool. It's yeah, a it very strange world we're living in these. Yeah, it causes all kinds of weird, like, you know, international relationships. Yeah, yeah and dependencies. Yeah, I appreciate that. I like your practical real world approach, man. I get where you're coming from. So let's move on to talking about um, the growing wealth gap, right? Um, we could they say, say that the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. Um, do you have any, how would you address that? Well, I've always heard that jobs are the main thing that people really care about. People, people want a hand up, not a hand out. And I completely agree with that. Okay. I live out, I live out in the country, but I grew up in the city and I've seen discrepancies and I've known plenty of poor people. I still do know plenty of poor people. And there's some of the, some of the people that I know they're the hardest working people I know um, because they have to work that much harder Yeah. <laughs> because they, they just don't have the education. They don't have the hey, job skills. Quick question. Um, right? in your community, because in most and like I'm in New York City, but I've also go upstate and other places like that. Right. A lot of local towns have been replaced by Walmart and things like that. They've really gotten hollowed out. I don't know about over there in Florida. Uh, but I think that's a lot of like a lot of mom and pop stores have been, now been replaced by and now they're, they're working at Walmart. You know what I'm talking about? Main Street. Main Street's closing. Yeah. Miles of four sale signs. How oh, is yeah. it in your neighborhood, especially after this COVID thing? I mean, yeah. We, um, the local community in here in, in Lake Wales in Polk County, Florida, has been trying to revitalize all of our of our city centers. Um, there's a lot more restaurants that have opened recently. Uh, I, I personally, I try not to shop. I don't shop on Amazon. I try not to really shop at Walmart. I try to shop at brick and mortar stores that are local. Um, if I have to, then I will go to a big box store. But I, I prefer, I mean, even if I have to pay a little more, I'd rather go there and support lo local small business. And I try to do it every day. Appreciate that deeply, yeah. Um, okay, so look, the government, when we take a look at the, uh, you know, you're running for a federal position. Uh, now, a lot of stuff is controlled by the Senate, but you still will still, still have some influence regarding large federal spending programs, such as Social Security, Medicare, welfare, things like that, right? Those are large expenditures. Um, what are your plans regarding those particular uh, programs? Well, Social Security has been debated for ever and a lot of the, the money has been robbed from those programs and used for other programs um, um i've been paying into it for 35 years yeah. so when when i mean when i when i turn i mean it needs to be protected i mean obviously you know it's a social safety net for people as well um I don't really know exactly what should be done to protect it, but I know it's just like just like with the roads. You pay a certain amount of money in, in taxes for gasoline. Right. You go buy a gallon of gas with a certain amount of tax. That money's supposed to go towards fixing the roads. Yeah. But our, our current leadership does not use it for that. Our current leadership goes and guts that and they use it for other programs. There are certain things that, that need to just be left alone. The money that's allocated for this needs to go to this. If I'm paying my money for Social Security and you're using it for something else, you know, shame on you. There should be consequences for that. That's such a common sense, reasonable answer. I'm so sad our government can't figure that out. But uh, I agree with you 100%, right? Yeah, that's the actually whole idea behind Unified Platform for 22, just simple common sense answers that 
our government can't seem to figure out. I really like that answer. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so we take a look at um, also, uh, you know, there's quite a few issues, but uh, criminal reform, right? That usually gets to be a hot topic, especially in the summer, right? When uh, things pop off. So uh, what are your thoughts on criminal reform? Any, any ideas there? Um, this is another thing. Yeah, this is another thing that's been debated forever. Okay. There has to be consequences for your for if you commit a crime, there has to be a consequence. That's the yeah. thing that keeps people from committing crimes is the thought that that okay, you know, I I, I can go to jail. On that so they, they're, on that note right they, there, they think, it makes yeah. them think. On that note right there, we actually it have a. Uh, think a candidate from North Carolina, and she talked about um, ending qualified immunity. Would you, is, is that, a, right? So when you talk about, right, uh, being, like, if you do the crime, you got to do the time, right? So, you know, you've heard about something called qualified immunity, right? Where some people do the crime and they don't do the time. Sure. But is that ending qualified immunity something you would support? Correct. Yeah? I would have to do a lot more research on it to, to make sure that I got, had the right answer. Yeah, but um, probably some I instances. believe that yeah. Okay. I believe that what what a lot of these DAs are doing is just it's it's criminal. I mean, uh, they're 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 not prosecuting people when they're committing serious crime. And then you get well at what you have in California where they're doing the smash and grab robberies. I mean, it's all over the news. Yeah. If you embolden the criminals, they're going to they're going to go out and they're going to steal. I mean, yeah. And and okay, just recently, just recently, there all the trains were being robbed in California. And they said it's the homeless that's that's doing it. No, it's not the homeless that's doing it. The homeless though doesn't have 90 angle grinders and things to go cut bolts off of those off those containers to get in them. They don't know what's in them. They that that's organized crime. That needs to that that needs to stop. Um, the drug problems in our country, the, the are just insane. The border's wide open. Fentanyl's flowing over the over the border. How many people is that going to kill? I mean, it's 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 insane. That right there is insane. And the drug cartels are getting rich off of off of the borders being open. They get their they get their drug. They're all the stuff that, that that they make all the drugs out of. They get it all out of China. All the raw ingredients. They take it to the jungle labs down in down in Mexico. They mix it up. They smuggle it across our wide open southern border. They bring it into, into up here and then into stash houses. I'm sure that there's some right around where you are, and I'm sure that there's some right around where I am. And then they then they distribute it. Then China comes back, takes the money, takes it over to China. That they wire it to China. They clean it and they give them back their their their, their clean money. That needs to stop. Yeah. That's the easy fix. Yeah, there's a lot of shenanigans going on. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm also a very strong anti-corruption guy. Go ahead. Yes. Okay, yeah. It's, I'm just really worried about our country and I'm really worried about the direction that we're going in. I see a lot of things that are just so bad. It's just so, it's just so scary that yeah. if, if, if it's not, if it's not stopped and it's not fixed, we're going to be in big trouble. I appreciate big it. Trouble. Yeah, that's why I'm also doing uh, this program right here and I appreciate you working on that. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we can uh, okay. get a... A, a critical mass of third party independent and you know thanks for you're the first republican on here right we also have already democrats uh maybe one or two democrats already participating with this program right and then we can raise our voice together on the common sense stuff right i found a lot of stuff that we agreed on today right that we're technically maybe not supposed to but you know that's them talking not us right we can talk to each other and get these common sense solutions passed sure. so um, we take a look at the, uh, a lot of people have lost the faith in our institutions, such as uh, the education system, the medical system, they're both overpriced and under-delivering for our communities. What would you do to kind of fix uh, these industries, medical and education, right, that are just overspending and not giving us results? Medical is very interesting because you have health, the health insurance, my health insurance under Obamacare went from $12 a week to $30. $34 a week to $42 a week. Now it's $56 a week. So I went from 12 to 56 in a span of 10 years. Um, 
there's a lot that can be done there. Prescription drug prices are a huge issue, huge issue. I mean, I know people that are on insulin and they pay they pay over a hundred dollars a week for their insulin. Um, that that that's a huge issue. Um, and the other thing is that insulin is actually derived from a plant. I mean, they they there, there's people that I know that grow insulin plants and they make tea from it, and it's actually better. I've gotten a lot of people off of insulin using this 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 tea, but that's neither here nor there. But education, education. I actually have a friend who's actually on on um, the school board, local school board, and we sit and we talk about education a lot. And the kids have to be back in school. That's number one. These kids being out of school for, I mean, we in, here in Florida, our kids have been back in school for a long time. I understand that protect people from COVID. If you're vulnerable, stay home. If you're not, go live your life. I mean, you only yeah. get one. You know, I mean, we've been locked up for two. We, they've been trying to lock us up for two years now. Enough. Yeah. You know, I mean, live your life. Just go live your life. Down here in Florida, we're wide open. I mean, people people are doing things differently. People kind of stay away from each other a little bit more. People don't shake hands like they used to. Um, Zoom it became a huge thing, of course. Teams meetings, things of that like that of that nature. But I mean, education. The kids have to be in school. I mean, that's that's number one. That's the, yeah. the most important thing. Um, I'm not going to learn a, anything. Yeah. Sitting in front education. Of one of the big uh, deals though is like student debt, right? Um, it's 1.4 trillion dollars of student debt um, right now. Um, right. We're actually charging our children so much money. The, I think that uh, Harvard has an endowment of $56 billion just cash just sitting in a bank account. Um, actually, if you take a look at the public housing here in New York City, right, NYU is one of the largest property owners in New York City. Uh, Cornell Pace bought a uh, the public housing projects down here. They're, what does that have to do with education, right? They're just financial institutions that are just draining our, our youth to uh, just get rich, right? They're, well, right, all information got cheaper, right? Music, books, right? They're, they're a fraction of the cost that they used to be. But education has just kept going up. And even the books, it's a, the books, right? It's a scam within a scam. People playing all this money for books. It's the same books. They feel just, and it's wasteful. So what about the student? Back, like, back when I was in school. Yeah. Would you be for? Uh, when I was in school. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh no! I was just saying that the the, book, the books. I mean, you used to you used to use the textbook, and then you turn it back in, and they give you you know a partial refund on on the books. I, I guess they're not doing that. No, they do that, but you know, um, the thing is that they'll change the versions, right? So they'll upgrade the version of the of the book, but they'll just switch some chapters around. It's really kind of unnecessary, right? Yeah, but I get it. They want to maximize mm -hmm. profits, right? They can move chapter two to chapter thirteen with some numbers of questions. Anyways, yeah, that's their game. So, uh, okay, so we're getting to the end of the interview. Um, hmm. Okay, oh, so. Well, I'd, like to, I'd like to finish, this. I'd like to finish the, student, the student debt. I'd like okay, to I'm actually sorry, finish talking about that. Oh yeah, what are you planning for student debt? Oh, that's okay. Um, well, there's, 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 my mother went to college and she had to pay, pay her student loans. I mean, I went to school. I went to, I had some college I didn't finish. I, mm -hmm. I went to, I, I found out that I was actually private business. And so I just went that route. Um, but here's the thing. I can't get a mechanic to work on my car. I mean, it's a huge issue. We, we have a trucking company with over 700 trucks and we can't get quality mechanics to work on the vehicles. So if you have if you have free college for everyone, who's going to work on your stuff when you're when it breaks down? If you if you you if you're if you can't get somebody to come out and fix your refrigerator, what are you doing? Throwing it away and buying another one. I mean, it, it's washer and dryer, same thing. If we don't have these blue collar skilled labor, we're going to be in trouble. That's another thing that can can come up and bite us. So. Free college for all is interesting, but it's not a solution long term to yeah. to all these other positions that need to be filled. Yeah. It's not. I mean, it, yeah. 
I mean, and, and the thing about it is I understand, I understand the, the price of college is going crazy. I mean, I've heard that, that's, that that's a ridiculous. class at, it's absurd. at, yeah, we were just talking about this the other day at, at Santa Fe in Gainesville, Florida, the, 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 the state run college, a class is $300. If you go over to university of Florida, it's $3,000 for the same class. It's intensely so, corrupt. And then that, that's, a, yeah. that's a state school. So, and I'm not picking on the university of Florida, go yeah. Gators, but, um, it's, there has to be some way to make it college cheaper. I don't wouldn't even want to speculate what a class at NYU cost. Um, <laughs> I, I, I walked out the room it'd laughing. Probably scare me. Yeah. I think it's like three thousand sure dollars a credit or something. So one class could be like nine thousand dollars. I literally walked out of their office laughing. I said, "You got to be kidding me." Yeah, there's no way. Wow. Yeah, I don't even. Yeah, forget it. You take a four credit class like ten thousand no. dollars. What? Just get no, no way. It's ridiculous. I wasn't aware of that. There probably there probably needs to be addressed absolutely because I mean kids are going into into debt. They're buying a house before they ever get out of school. It's so a scam. That, that that needs to be addressed. But yeah. pre college for all is. I mean, when my my mom went to school, she worked two jobs and and put yeah. put herself through school while she was raising me, and no one ever helped her out with her college loans. I mean. I understand there's, that there's that no that reason things, for the college you know, cost as much absolutely not there's absolutely there's, it's absurd yeah with the with the advances in technology that's something else yeah. I, that's something else i'd like to look into as well okay that's that's awesome yeah i appreciate that we're going to have a series of actual uh, panel discussions with a bunch of uh, other candidates and i hope that you'll be participating in some of them uh, i really think that you were a very uh, cool candidate right our first uh, republican candidate super cool also, nice to know that you're a Tulsi fan. I actually have a lot of people from the Tulsi crew that watch my uh, channel. So if you're watching from the Tulsi crew, uh, okay. I definitely was uh, one of the top guys in New York here. Uh, and I know some people in Texas. Okay. Uh, yo, give our man Drew Shepard a look. Yeah, he's definitely worth it. Yeah, I thought he was pretty cool. So um, j before we go, I want you to share your, uh, you have a website, you have a Twitter, you have Twitter, you have like a social media that people can follow your campaign on. Sure, it's uh, Shepherd for US Congress .com. I'm on Twitter at GG Shepherd, S H E P H E R D, the number three. And uh, that's basically about all about it. I also have a Facebook page. It's uh, Shepherd for US Congress, also. Okay. So if you want to go check me out, I'd be happy to, uh, to look, look at your comments. You can comment on mine. Some candidates that, that you can't comment on their Facebook page, you can comment on, of course, my Twitter. And on my Facebook page, and there's all kinds of links on my website as well. I appreciate that. And uh, last question is, now that people know, like you know, your website stuff like that, what uh, give them something to look forward to, right? We got an event coming up, uh, right? What's going on, right? What, they're going to tune into Twitter. And what, what are they going to? They're going to go into the Facebook, and what are they going to see? What's coming up for you? Uh, well, we're just basically waiting on the state of Florida to come out with the district, so we know where our line, our our district is, where the lines are. Okay. So until we really know what the lines are, we really can't do much of anything. And we're running real grassroots. I don't believe that it should cost $1.5 million for a House a House of Representatives seat and $15 million for a Senate seat. That's ridiculous. Yeah. The amount of money that, that is spent just just in, in those two chambers in our, in our nation's capital is just insane. So we're running real grassroots. We're going to be doing a lot of YouTube videos. Well, we're going to be doing a lot of a lot of just going out, knocking door to door in in the, the local area. What's your, and, what's uh, your ballot that's petition? How we're going to we're going to camp. What's your ballot petition deadlines? Are you guys starting that, or you guys finish that? Where are you guys in that process? Oh, the ballot, the, the petition process to be yeah. for, to be a candidate yeah. or to to for, for qualifying. Qualifying is in June, okay, so, so we have we have until June to get two thousand five hundred and sixty eight signatures. So if you like what he hears, you know, what I mean, uh, if you're watching and you're in Texas. Look at this guy up and help him out. You know, uh, he'll also need some people to help him get these signatures. So, I guess you have till June, but uh, you know, we're already in March. So, yeah, it has to get be, out the way. It has to be in the state of Florida. It has to be in. The, you have to be in the state of Florida to sign oh, sign the ballot. South Florida, yeah, Florida down south. Yeah, I was thinking down south. All right, yeah, Florida, my bad. Yeah, much love, Florida. Yeah, that's a tough one. That'd be Washington, Schultz. Ooh, all, all that those corrupt Democrats down there. Ooh, that. That's a horrible stronghold, man. I, I wish you the very best, for real, yeah? Hopefully this, uh, 
this um, appreciate program it. could help you. God bless. Thank you. It's a dark day in our nation when high-level authorities will seek to use every method to silence dissent. The truth must be told. And if you want the truth, you need to check out independent media producers just like myself, DJL7. You should subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications when I release a new video. The truth of these we words all is the beyond doubt. Platforms. That includes Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course YouTube. Unfortunately, we have definitely seen that these mainstream outlets will cave to corporate interests, Against so we encourage you to join our independently moderated communities of Reddit and Discord. We also encourage you to subscribe to us on BitChute Daily Motion so you can see the content that YouTube doesn't want us to let you see. Hey, now it's time for the most important part of the video. That's right. It's time for us to tell you about the Taking Action Group. Do you need an activist? Or maybe there's no activists around willing to help you with your cause and you need to learn to become an activist. That's exactly why we're here. Every week we get up with people from across the nation, in fact even sometimes internationally, and we develop strategies and a game plan to address the issues that are affecting all of us. Every week myself from New York City and of course my co-host Lisa from Los Angeles provide a coast to coast perspective on what's going on in the country. If you want to donate to help out with expenses, travel, equipment, you know, stuff like that, then I definitely appreciate it and you can hit us off at Venmo or PayPal. Thanks a lot. Hey, by the way, we also have a merch store, so check it out. Oh my goodness, it seems like you've reached the end of the video, so make sure you check out some of our other videos. Uh, make sure you subscribe. This is your last chance to do so, so thanks a lot. And looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please comment below if you have any questions or issues you'd like me to address. And if you're an activist, the time to make things happen is now.
It's a dark day in our nation when high level authorities will seek to use every method to silence dissent. The truth must be told. And if you want the truth, you need to check out independent media producers just like myself, DJ L7. You should subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications when I release a new video. The truth of these we words are all is beyond the doubt. That includes Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course YouTube. Unfortunately, we have definitely seen that these mainstream outlets will cave to corporate interests. So we encourage you to join our independently moderated communities of Reddit and Discord. We also encourage you to subscribe to us on BitChute and Daily Motion so you can see the content that YouTube doesn't want us to let you see. Hey, now it's time for the most important part of the video. That's right. It's time for us to tell you about the Taking Action Group. Do you need an activist? Or maybe there's no activist around willing to help you with your cause and you need to learn to become an activist. That's exactly why we're here. Every week we get up with people from across the nation, in fact even sometimes internationally, and we develop strategies and a game plan to address the issues that are affecting all of us. Every week myself from New York City and of course my co-host Lisa from Los Angeles provide a coast-to-coast -coast perspective on what's going on in the country. If you want to donate to help out with expenses, travel, equipment, you know, stuff like that, then I definitely appreciate it and you can hit us off at Venmo or PayPal. Thanks a lot. Hey, by the way, we also have a merch store, so check it out. Oh my goodness, it seems like you've reached the end of the video, so make sure you check out some of our other videos, uh, make sure you subscribe. This is your last chance to do so, so thanks a lot, and looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please comment below if you have any questions or issues you'd like me to address. And if you're an activist, the time to make things happen is now.